the perfect computed property. Or how I learned to stop worrying and use a bubble transform in an Ember add-on with a computed property macro based on template strings. <laughs> so now Peter Seller does a much better German accent than I have, unfortunately. He's still the, the man. Um, so who am I? Um, as I said, my name is Serena, and I'm a product engineer at Intercom. That's my Twitter handle. I'm always looking out for followers. Uh, and this talk is actually a collaboration between me and my colleague Gavin Joyce, who many of you know already and who's an avid uh, um, community, who does a lot of community work with Ember. So Intercom is a customer communication platform and it's actually quite a large um, Ember application. And this graph actually shows uh, relatively well how our production code grew in the last two years alone. So here you see uh, the blue lines are the lines of JavaScript, red the lines of handlebars, and then green JavaScript and handlebar, and it goes up and up and up. And the problem with large or increasing code is increasing complexity, and um, it, the, the application and increased application payload, and it slows us down as engineers as well. There is a big cognitive um, load for new engineers to come in and learn code or read over the code. Um, so at the beginning of this year, we actually made an uh, ex explicit effort to bring down the number of lines of code. And then not actually by just going into our code and removing lines of code, we actually shipped quite a lot. We actually even uh, shipped a new feature, but by being really frugal with how we use code. And one of the things we, uh, we use a lot is computed property macros. Um, so Ember has a lot of computer property macros, uh, or has its own set of computer property macros, which you see here, uh, just a subset of them. <coughs> you probably all use Ember not, Ember and. And we uh, also built our own set of computed uh, property macros. Um, the, 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 the advantage of them is so to get rid, actually, of multi-line um, computer properties. So um, I show you an example here now. So this, this, this is a, um, this, these are some of our computer property set of computer properties. Like half, for example, would half a, a computer property value. Computed ternary is a ternary operator for computed properties. Um, uh, and the advantage of having our own set of computer property macros is uh, to 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 get rid of some of the duplication of code. I show you an example in a moment. That it makes it, that makes it better understandable. But that's quite a lot, actually. I thought <laughs> I practiced only with Gavin. This is the, the occurrence of um, percentage and add with the, the string template. So in this case, can we do a quick bit of running? Yeah. running mic? It was really useful, right? It was that useful, actually, that we wrote our own computed uh, our own computed property macro, which we called computed format, does exactly the same thing like string format, just with computed properties. So you, you here see high uh, the percent uh, so percentage at percentage at first name last name first name last name are computed properties, and it actually uses Ember string format under the hood. Um, and the advantage is um, that it actually is a one-liner, a one-line computed property macro compared to when you see usually you have this canonical example, first name, last name, and the duplication of the two computed properties here. So it's much easier for, for example, new engineers to reason about what the string means, what the code means, um, and the cognitive load um, is a little bit de decreased on, on engineers. But unfortunately, we have this problem, Ember string format got deprecated in Ember too, right? So we have to rewrite our computed format. So what do we do? So then the first approach, or the first proposal we, uh, we did was, in January, Gavin actually posted on um, Ember CPM. This is the uh, computed property macros for Ember, an idea for a computed property macro, a new idea. And what does it look like? So the first idea was be, okay, let's use something similar. Uh, sorry, so string, uh, string effort format was replaced by uh, ES2015 template strings. So let's use something similar to this. So here you see, for example, the template hi, first name, last name, using uh, ES2015 syntax, um, syntax like, um, sorry, uh, syntax like, syntax, <laughs> sorry guys. Um, <laughs> I reboot my brain. Um, so then Robert Jackson actually posted a question on that proposal saying, why are we not using tech template strings actually? 
why are we not using tag template strings? Because it has been done. So there is actually an add-on called HTML bars precompiler add-on, uh, which does exactly that. They use tag template strings. So th th this um, add-on allows you to pre uh, to precompile inline HTML bars. Um, and so, for example, this string HBS high name, this tag template gets exp uh, extracted into this huge code base uh, or this bigger code here. So, okay, next idea. Let's use tag template um, uh, literals. Template high first name last name. Cool. Problem. We can't do it that way because we're getting JS hint errors. The problem is that the variable parts first name and last name can't be resolved at module runtime. So that's not an approach. We unfortunately can't take this. Um, so we have to go back to the drawing board and go back to our original idea with using plain strings where we actually resolve the variable parts at runtime. So, okay, this was our first proposal. We came back to it. We think, okay, this is probably the best uh, way to do. So we have this idea of using this one line computed property macro and transforming this at runtime into a computer property function. So you see here, this would, uh, this piece, the, the variable parts would be then resolved properly into, into this, in, in this function. Um, the way we actually realized this is we built an Ember add-on, and this Ember add-on uh, uses or imports uh, a template parser, which is a node module. And I will talk about them now in more detail so that you understand what we actually did there. So the template string parser is actually the one which does the proper work here. It's a, um, the, so before you had the string um, with uh, dynamic and static parts. So name and age are the dynamic parts, the rest are static parts. And this would return then, so this would get as input the string and would return the function, this uh, computed property function with all the variable parts resolved. Um, I had a look at EmberConf this year. Um, James Kyle did an amazing talk about the super tiny compiler. Has anybody seen it, guys? It's really, really good. Yeah, it's, really, it's a lovely talk. I really highly re would recommend you uh, looking at it. And we did something very similar. James' compiler is actually more complex than ours. Ours is super simple, and I'll show you now very quickly how we do it. So as I said, we have to parse out the static and the dynamic parts, right? Sounds easy. Okay, so what we do is we walk through the string character by character, and we're pretty dumb about it. So what we do is, okay, we start up. Hi, this is probably a, a, a static part because we haven't seen any indication that this is a dynamic uh, property because a dynamic property is, or sorry, a dynamic part is indicated by the dollar cur open curly braces. So we're walking through character by character until we're finding the, until the next character will be a, a dollar, and the next character after this is an uh, open curly braces, and this is probably then from the start index to this point is then a literal. So now we're in a different mode. We are reading in a dynamic part. When we're reading this in until we're finding the end of a dynamic part, the end of the dynamic part indicated by closed curly braces. So again, quite stupid. That parser goes on until it finds this uh, closed curly braces, and this is a dynamic part. So this is a, the first one was a literal, the next one will be popped onto the stack as a, as a proper team. So the next part here, you see comma, and then the uh, space you are, again, a literal part, and the next part here, this is a dynamic part. So these are the actual, uh, so we have uh, two, uh, two, two static parts and two dynamic parts, and so the parser then can return, just literally concatenates them um, together to form this embedded fun uh, this um, property function you've seen before. The Ember add-on will import that parser as a, a dependency, and I show you now on this code p what we did actually here. So we have um, we have a couple of uh, things that are important. So the first step is we actually have to find out what's the imported function? What's the name of the imported function? So that's the first step which it tries to find. So okay, in this case, import template string. So template string is the name of the imported function. We then find where actually in the code it is used. So in this case, 
the third pro computer property greeting uses that uh, function. And we're just reading out the, the, the string part, the template part of this function, which is this high dollar name, ur dollar h. And this will be given to the parser as an input, and the parser returns the function you've previously seen. So um, we're using bubble transformations in this Amber add-on to actually um, when the, uh, to actually replace the abstract syntax tree of the code um, with the, the newly returned function. So in this case, the computer property greeting, or th this, uh, the, the part greeting will be replaced by um, this new function, the return function from the parser, which is the canonical example, as you see. So before, we have a one-liner here, template string, afterwards, canonical example as we all um, know. And the, exa the, the really nice part about this is that at compile time you actually don't have to reason about um, much code because it's still a one-liner, but at runtime we don't have much runtime abstraction. So it's, it's just literally like the, the uh, string concatenation. There's no, not, much, uh, not much to it. Um, so I'm pretty sure you're all excited about the demo. I am, no. um, so one second, sorry, I make this a bit bigger. So we actually open source both the parser and the add-on. And I just show you quickly, sorry guys, I have to click through. I, sent, I, I will uh, give you the URL again because we're always interested in uh, new PRs and extending this. So you see here the example, we have two computer properties, uh, first name and last name. We have here as an example, as a comparison, the two, um, two computer properties using the canonical examples, canonical computer property functions. But then we have here the two full name two and greeting two which use our computer, the new computer property macro, our new written one. And I, I would say, I think I like the two last one lines uh, better. I don't know about you, but I think it's much easier to reason about one liners than about the Two, two, two or three liners. So I run this here, um, and you see here it, it works exactly the same way. Like uh, if we see Ember Camp, so the code is not. We didn't destroy anything. And the interesting part is if I go into the source code, and I show you now how it looks. I, I don't know whether you can fully see it, but it's pretty much um, transformed into the same code like the canonical examples would be. So we haven't lost anything. We haven't, like, um, haven't destroyed any, any functionality here. Um, if I go back now, sorry guys, to the, so you probably all ask yourself, how do I use it? Because I hope you all wanna use it and are excited about it. Um, you just install it as an Ember add-on. That's the nice part about Ember that it gives you all uh, that it gives us all these tools and tool sets to do it really easily. And then you just use it and hopefully uh, um, do loads of one-liners and get rid of cognitive load for your engineers. Um, and also, like you make me very happy if uh, um, if you would help us contribute and bring ideas. Like there's probably loads of things we can still do with it. So uh, with this uh, nice gentleman at the end, what did we do? So Ember string format was deprecated and we used it in our computer, to, um, in our computer property macro, so we needed to rewrite it. We had a lot of ideas and approaches, but finally we, decided, uh, we went with the uh, basic plain strings where we pass out the variable parts and transform them using bubble transformations at runtime. And we wrote it as an Ember add-on, which was actually quite quick to do. Thank you very much, guys, uh, for your time.